Hey guys, it's Andy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to import data from the BLK to Go. So I just finished up a scan, and now it's time to import that data to the computer. You are gonna need Register 360 to import and process BLK to Go data. With the BLK to Go, you have the option to import the data wirelessly or with a USB-C cable. Today I'm gonna to show you both ways. To import wirelessly, I'm first gonna to need to connect my computer to the BLK to go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Wi-Fi settings here. I'll see the BLK to go here, and I'm gonna to connect to it. If it's your first time connecting to your BLK to go, you'll need to enter in a password. The password is found on the card that you got with your BLK to go, uh, but if you lose this card, uh, the same information is found on the inside of the battery. Once I'm connected, I can go ahead and open up Register 360. Now I'm gonna create a new project and title it Office. You'll see I have this BLK to go import button here. I'm gonna click on that. You'll see it's automatically going to find uh, this BLK to go. I'm gonna click connect. Once it's connected, I'm gonna click add to project. This is just gonna bring over a list of all the different scans I have on the BLK to go. Um, I can drag this over so I can see um, each individual scan. I have about 50 scans on here, but I only need the, the most recent scan that I did. So I can go to the top, uh, uncheck them all, and then uh, check the, the, the last one. Now I can go ahead and click import, and it'll wirelessly transfer all that data over to the computer. Now I'm gonna show you how to import this data using a USB-C cable. First thing you need to do is take out the battery of the blk to go and plug in the USB-C cable to the USB-C port and plug in the other side of the USB-C cable to your computer. Then you'll see the ring light up, which means it's connected. Now I can go ahead and open up Register 360. Uh, I'm gonna go into that same office project and click Import BLK to Go. You can see that it's already found uh, that same BLK to Go. Uh, I'm gonna click Connect. It's connected. Now I'm gonna click Add to Project. Same exact thing, it's gonna bring over a list of each scan that I currently have on the scanner. Um, just like last time, I'm gonna uncheck them all and check the, the last one that I took. There might be a case where you need to put two different BLK to go scans together. For example, maybe you aren't able to access the entire site on a particular day, you might need to come back on another day and take another scan to finish the job. To demonstrate this, I took two separate scans that I'm gonna to put together in Register 360. So in this case, I'm gonna import the last two scans that I did. Before I import these two scans, there are a couple options that I wanna walk you through. Down on the right-hand corner, uh, the first option is Save Copy to Local Folder. This will save the, the raw data file from the blk to go uh, to your computer. So if anything happens to your project, you can always re-import that raw data file. The next option is export E57 to folder. There might be the case where I don't need to do any cleaning or processing to my data, but I just need an E57 file as quickly as I can. I can use this tool uh, and it'll import the data from the blk to go process the SLAM, and then export a colorized E57 file. This is the quickest way to get a, an E57 file from the data that I just collected. The next option down the list is trajectory settings. As the blk to go is scanning, the three cameras around the outside are constantly taking images, and any of these images can be created into a panoramic image. So using this setting, we can determine how often we want these panoramic images in our scan. I can make them uh, as close together as I want or as far apart, depending on my project. It is important to note that the more panoramic images that I generate, the longer the processing time will take. The nice thing about this import process is that I can scale it up or down depending on my particular project. If I just want a bare bones import and I don't need any panoramic images and I don't need a colorized point cloud, I can go ahead and turn that off in the settings here. This will just give you an uncolorized point cloud, but if that's all you need, this is the quickest way to export your data from the BLK to go. In this case, I do want a colorized point cloud, so I'm gonna uh, put that back on, click OK. I don't need any registration done automatically, so I'm gonna uncheck those, and now I'm gonna click Import. Now I can see all my data here. 
I have two separate scans, uh, and each one of these red dots represents uh, each of those panel images that I created. Um, if I want to go in here, I can say show in cloud viewer. And now I can zoom around um, this entire building that I've scanned. If I want to toggle off these red bubbles, I can use this button here. Uh, I can view this a couple different ways. Uh, I can do grayscale. Sometimes that's a little easier to, to see. Um, if I want to turn on uh, those bubbles again, I can double click them. And now I can turn off the cloud and just see the image from those uh, those panel cameras. All right, now I'm going to show you a few different things that I do uh, to clean this up and get it ready for export. Uh, the first thing I'll do is go into sitemap uh, and I might square this up. Um, this might be a little tricky because this building is actually a little bit crooked. Um, but let's say I want to come in here uh, and I can either hold shift, um, click and hold on this button, and now I can rotate this um, to kind of orient this any way that I want. Uh, this method is, is really just for my own, my own OCD. Uh, this won't change the, the coordinate system in any way uh, for if you're bringing it into Revit or AutoCAD or something like that. If I do want to create a new coordinate system, uh, let me offset it just to show you. I can click on one of these uh, red bubbles and click this coordinate system feature. Uh, now this will bring up this little bullseye. Now I can drop this on a specific uh, corner and that'll be the origin point and then I can change this azimuth. So if I want to move it like this, I can create this. This will be named US, um, UCS1. I can name it um, um, local coordinates or something like that, and then click Create. Now this will square up um, the building to my own coordinate system. Next, I'm going to go ahead and register these two scans together. So you can see I have two separate scans here, and I know that this uh, scan was taken here in this stairwell. Uh, so I'm going to, I might need to actually go into this scan to see what's happening here. Okay. Was oriented like this. And to rotate it like that, I'm again just holding shift, clicking and holding on one of these red uh, handles, and then uh, rotating it. So I know that goes right about here. And then when I get it close, you can see Register 360 is already thinking that I can uh, attach it to any one of these. Um, I'm going to highlight two of these red bubbles and click Visual Alignment. Now I can go ahead and I can see that they're oriented right about here. Um, my method of, of registering two scans together like this is to orient one specific corner like this here. Then I can zoom out. Now I can toggle over to my rotate button, click, on that, click and hold on that exact corner, and now I can um, drag away and rotate this scan uh, so it lines up a little better. That looks pretty good right there. Uh, once that looks good, I can go into my side view to make sure these are lined up correctly. Because this is a stairwell, they're probably not going to be initially lined up um, perfectly. So I can move around like this. Actually, they're pretty close. Uh, but I'm going to go up to this and then drop it right about there. 
Um, once it looks good in both the XY and the Z view, I can click Join and Optimize and Register 360 is going to um, perform the algorithm to best fit these two clouds together. I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see all of these are put together. I have a link here between these two. I can toggle this link on and off. And now I just have a, a single bundle. Uh, and everything's connected. All right, uh, so before I hand this off to a client, there are a couple things that I want to clean up here. I definitely want to delete all the points outside the windows. Um, you can see I captured a few things um, on both sides outside the windows. Uh, and this data is, is definitely not going to be reliable because the, the laser was going through a window. So I'm going to um, go ahead and clean that up. There are a couple ways I will do this. Uh, first, I'm going to toggle off all those red dots. Uh, and then I'm going to use a limit box to kind of limit off this by um, different floors. Uh, so I'm going to uh, toggle on a limit box here, let's say create limit box. Um, and then the, the limit box feature is pretty cool. So as I hover over one of these sides, I can click and drag this over. I'll drag it about there and then I can do that for each of these sides. Um, if I hold shift, it'll actually get rid of the three sides that are closest to me and highlight the back. So I, I don't have to rotate around the cloud to be able to get to the back side of the limit box. Um, so now what I want to do is just segment this off by floor. So it just makes it a little bit easier to clean. And then if I want to uh, just hide the limit box really quick, there's this uh, limit box visibility thing here. I can just toggle that off. Uh, now what I can do is view this from the top, switch to orthographic mode, and then start deleting everything outside the windows. Um, to delete, I'm going to use the fence tool here. Um, initially, it's going to be like a rectangle. I don't really like the rectangle. Uh, I always choose the polygon. If I, if I choose the polygon, now it becomes the default. So I can use the F key to toggle the fence tool. It will always be the polygon. So I can uh, click to drag a fence. I can also just hold and drag and it will I have a little more flexibility there. Then it highlights all the points inside the fence, and then I can choose to either delete inside the fence or delete outside. In this case, I want to delete all the points inside that fence. Um, so I can go ahead and, and keep doing that. Uh, another thing that might be helpful is some, sometimes the points might be dark against this black background. So I can go ahead and change uh, the, the point cloud colors to hue intensity. So, so now um, everything is kind of brighter against the black background, so it makes it a little easier to see. Um, this, this room I wasn't able to get. Um, the door was just open, but we weren't able to get in there. So I'm going to delete that. There's also a shortcut to delete inside. It's Shift I. If you don't want to keep keep hitting that button. Okay, this looks pretty good for this level. Uh, so now I'm going to do is toggle that um, limit box back on. I'm going to drop the top level down to about where the first level is, and I can just go straight through um, until it opens up uh, in the other direction so I can see the, the bottom level now. I'm going to toggle that back off. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to go through. Sometimes an easier way to do this is just 
selecting the entire building. Need to be fully zoomed out for this. Now I've selected just the building and now I can say delete outside and it'll delete everything outside that box. Uh, so I can do a little bit more cleaning a little bit faster. Okay, so there's a little bit of messy data right here where I opened the door. Uh, but this is really easy to clean uh, with this new smooth surface tool. So my, um, if, I, if I open up my window a little bit here, you'll see I have this find smooth surface. So if I click on that, it's going to make the entire cloud gray. Now I want to double click on any smooth surface here. So I'm going to double click here and it's going to try to find a smooth surface and what it's done is it's, it's highlighted that surface as gray and everything else is red. So you can see that the, the points um, right here in the doorway that I want to delete are colored red. Now what I can do is um, fence those in just like I did before. Uh, I can hit delete inside and it's only going to delete the, the red points in that fence. So it's not going to touch the smooth surface uh, that it's found on, um, which is the ground. Uh, so this is a really quick and easy way to delete. Uh, if there's people walking through your scan, it's really easy just to find this floor like this uh, and delete, um, just fence in the people and delete the people and it won't even touch the floor. Once things look good, this looks pretty okay. I can go back and click smooth surface um, and it'll basically close out of this smooth surface tool. All right, so now I can go ahead and um, bring back my entire cloud. Um, I do want to point out if I, if I zoom in here, go back to perspective. Um, this point uh, right here, this little geotag, that's uh, placed in the 3D space where I took that, um, that image from the detail camera. So if I click on that, um, I get a, a little preview of that picture and then I can always open that up so I can always uh, find that image in the 3D space. All right, now that my point cloud is cleaned, I'm ready to export this out. If all I need is a floor plan, I can go ahead and create a scaled ortho image here and open it up in AutoCAD. If I want to export the entire point cloud, I can go through, um, through my publish options here. Uh, if I want to open this up in one of Leica's products, I can export this LGS file. If I'm going to an Autodesk product like Revit or AutoCAD, I can directly export an RCP file. Uh, or I can export as an E57 or a PTS if you're going to any other software. All right, so that was a quick video on importing BLK to go data, cleaning it up, and then exporting it out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.